Alright, so welcome back again. My name is Jesse, and in this wonderful and exciting tutorial, we're trying to see how to use ChatGPT to be able to solve some programming challenges, right? So these are Python programming challenges that can be found on GitHub, which is available and it has all the questions, or over 100 of them, together with their solution, right? So we want to see if we can use ChatGPT to answer these questions. So let me copy this. So the question is to write a program which will find all such numbers which are divisible by seven but are not a multiple of five so this you can do with modulus so let's see how it's going to solve it so i'm going to copy this go back to chat gpt and then i'm going to paste the question here so let's see so here's a solution using for loop right so it's going to use for loop and this will actually work right this will actually give us the right result it's going to give us two results two options so that is very cool and very impressive. <laughs> so it's even given us another alternative of using list comprehension to do the same thing. And giving us a very nice interpretation, which is very cool. If I go back and I check here, so it is just a for loop, we loop through the number, we find the modulus of one and seven, like I, modulus seven, if it's if it go to zero, and the same thing right and it put them together and that's exactly what it did here in a list comprehension which is another alternative and the one here right which is very cool if i check it out if i check it out in python itself so i'll copy this one here now go back to my python and i'll check it out well just able to give us the right result which is very cool right if i go back to the answer that we're given by these people so let's copy this and check it out let's see so yeah this is python 2.7 which is why it gave us the wrong stuff let's go see almost the same right it's the same right very very cool so that means that chat beat chat gpt yeah it's very cool so let's try another question so i'm going to go back again then i'm going to say, okay write a program which can compute the factorial of a given number and this is supposed to be the output so i'll copy this one and then I'm going to paste it here. And then let's analyze. Let's wait for ChatGPT to be able to solve it. So it's already solving it for us, as you can see. So it's giving us a solution to our question, which is very cool, right? This is actually going to work. So we can even tell it to write a test. So we have seen how to use ChatGPT to be able to solve some programming challenges. So I can also give it another one. So, so can you convert the same into, let's give it into Julia language. So you are getting the same thing and you are trying to convert the same code it to its equivalent in Julia. And this is actually going to work, which is very cool. <laughs> wow. That is very, very impressive. Okay. But this is very good. Yes, yeah, so because yeah, I've run out of it. But you can see that we can use ChatGPT to be able to generate some answers to some questions, right? So you can try it out and the answers are already here so you can actually compare them. This is very, very impressive and very, very amazing. So let's go back again. So let's go with this. Let's say define a class which has at least two methods so let's copy this and let's see if we can use chat gpt to solve this one so i'll go back down here here it gave us this so let's go back yeah so it's giving us the final result that we had then later i'm going to ask that question perfect so let's ask the next question let's see if it will be able to generate the class wow <laughs> so we are using okay it's giving us a different name string preprocessor or yeah string processor wow that is very cool wow this is very very impressive <laughs> it can be used to solve coding challenges right <laughs> so you can go to lead code and copy the questions there and put it here hey don't do it <laughs> okay well is even doing the same thing in julia I didn't even ask it to do it in Julia, but it's smart enough to do the same thing in Julia because I asked it once again. 
and this is impressive. So let's see whether it can write a unit test for the factorial question and then for the factorial both in Python and then in Julia. See, can you to write a unit test with pi test for the factorial question in Python? And in Julia, let's see. <laughs> yeah, giving it a more complicated. So it's doing the same thing for the factorial function that we had. It's able to know it. So it is in context, right? Very, very powerful stuff. And then we're going to see the same thing in Julia. Let's see. And it's giving us the result. It's going to run it. So it's doing the same thing again in Julia which is very cool. Oh. <laughs> that is very, very cool. This is impressive. So you have seen how to use chat GPT to be able to solve some programming challenges, right? Very cool. Now let's give it something different. I'm going to go back again and I'm going to tell it to mock right a. Uh, mm, let's give it a very difficult question. Yeah, so this is a different question, right? This one. Let's see whether to be able to do this NLP tax, right? So this is going to be our final tax. So write a program that accepts sequence of lines as input and prints the lines after making all characters in its lens capitalized. Well, <laughs> let's see. Wow, that is very interesting. See, it is able to generate all of these things out of the box. So it's even giving the same equivalent in Julia. So it has learned from my conversation that I like Python and Julia. So it's even giving the same thing in Python and then also in Julia. Perfect. Let's see if it is similar in the ones that we have here. Yeah, it's the same. So it's the same. It is the same. The one in Julia is the same, and then the one above is also the same. So that is very cool and very nice. Now, you have seen how to use ChatGPT to solve some interesting programming challenges. Let me see what you can also do with ChatGPT. See you in the next session. Stay blessed. Bye.